actually just a little two-point sermon this time. <laughs> it, it does have a long introduction. From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. saving me. Thank you for giving me this honor and this privilege to stand here and to teach her and preach your word. And dear Lord, I need your help. Lord, you know these written words that I've got written down don't make sense even if you read them. But dear Lord, I pray that you'd help me and use me. And I pray the Holy Spirit of God would just take your word and we'll apply it to people's lives and to the hearts. And your word will not come back void. I pray that your word will um, take a lodging place in people's hearts that where they will learn to live and, and put their faith and their trust in your word. And dear Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you for all that you've done. Truly, you're good to me and you're good to our church and our church family. I want to thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, in Jeremiah chapter 6, um, I'll just start reading here in verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thy hand as a grape gatherer into baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. They cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. That's God's people. Yeah, amen. They don't even, the, this Bible is a reproach to some yeah. people. Yeah. They don't even, no, 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 not that Bible again. Yeah, amen. Even in God's own people say that his word was a reproach to them. They had no delight in it. In verse 11, therefore, I am full of fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. That's what you get for not delighting in God's word. Amen. You make him mad. Yeah. I mean, he gets mad if you don't like his word. Yeah. He even gets more madder if you don't believe his word. And then when you go against his word, at least in the Old Testament, you know, he says he's full of fury. I am weary with holding in. I will pour out upon the children abroad and pour the assembly of the young men together. For even the husbands with the wives shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned un unto others with their friends, with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetous covetousness, and from the prophet even to the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abominations? Nay. When they did terrible things, they wasn't even ashamed. Yeah. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I shall visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way and see, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. I also said over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. The people here say, We ain't going to listen. Yeah, amen. We ain't going to listen. Your word is a reproach. I don't take no delight in it. And God got mad. God said, I'm going to turn you over here. I'm going to um, 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 take your houses from you, your wives, the old men, the 
They're going to take the land away from you because the whole land is full of this covetousness. Yeah. That word just means you want what you ain't got. And it says here, when they did bad things, they were not even able to blush. Yeah. And, but Jeremiah said, ask for the old paths and the good way. God has a way for you to walk in them. God wants you to walk in a certain way and down a certain path. And all through Israel, they, Israel had prophets saying, walk, do this, do this, and don't do that. And as time went on, here Jeremiah is preaching to them, and finally they just said, we're not going to walk that way. Yeah, yeah. Not even going to listen to the words of God. Jeremiah is one of the last prophets of Israel who prophesied about 10 to 20 years before the whole nation went into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar and carried them off to Babylon. They killed and slaughtered the men, the women, the boys, the girls of Israel. They carried the Israelites away to Babylon. They burned their temple. They burned their houses and just plummeted the whole land of Jerusalem. But the one thing, amazing thing about Jeremiah is that when he started his ministry, you know, everybody wants a ministry. When Jeremiah started his preaching, he started preaching about the people's sins and their idol worship and their immorality. And he started preaching to Israel when there was a good king named Josiah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a good king. Man. The Bible says Josiah did that which was right in the sight of God. And the reason that Josiah was a good king was that he hearkened to the words of God. Yeah. They found the book of God, the book of the law, and he began to read it. And Josiah began to make reformations throughout the land. And he made those reformations not because he wanted to, not because they, he thought it would be best for the people, not because the will of the people wanted it so, but he made those reformations because God said this is what we need to do and y'all ain't doing it and we need to do it this way because if you don't do it the way I want you to do it, Judgment is going to fall yeah. upon the nation of Israel. Yeah. Josiah believed what he read in the book of God. Amen. In the book of God, or what Josiah read was probably a lot in Exodus and Deuteronomy. And in those books, it pronounces the judgment on the people of Israel whom God once took out of Egypt, God's own people who, took, who brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea, brought him into the land of Canaan and gave him the land of Israel, that same God that said, if you would just keep my commandments and follow after me, love me, serve me, yeah. I will give you this land and you will dwell safely in the land. But if you don't, yeah, amen. I'm going to bring all these curses upon yeah, you yeah. and I'm going to drive you out of the land. And to be carried away into a foreign country by a nation that you don't even know their language. God required for the children of Israel to keep the commandments. And there are more than just ten commandments. Yeah. He means he wanted to keep his statutes, his judgments. He wanted them to love the Lord. He wanted the nation of Israel to teach their children what God has done for them. There's a whole lot of ceremonial and moral laws that God wanted his nation, um, um, Israel, to keep. But the main one was just to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and follow after him and keep his commandments. Yeah, and right. God gave them a book to tell them what those things yeah, were. Yeah. But we know through the process of time, and it didn't take long, time, didn't take long. But Israel began seeking after other gods. Yeah. They began seeking after other idols. They began false worshiping. They began worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars instead of the Creator. They began giving credit to false gods yeah, as Baal and Astros. Right. They began worshiping. Uh, 
worshiping with familiar spirits and wizards. They began to worship the queen of heaven and baking little cakes unto them. Yeah. And you better watch out for someone that wanted to worship the woman, a, a woman as the mother of God and bake little cakes yeah. to her. Yeah. They began to live immoral in their bodies. They began committing sodomy and other perversions. They began taking advantage of the poor and the widows and the fatherless. Yeah. And they kept keeping the poor under right. their bondage. And the book of God in Deuteronomy said that if you do those things, yeah, I, I am going to cast you out yeah. of the land of yeah. Israel. And when Josiah the king heard those things, he realized Israel was in a bad shape yeah. because all those bad things was happening in the land of Israel. And if Israel was going to continue to do those things and continue to follow that line, that the judgment of God was going to fall upon um, that nation of Israel. The prophecy of what Deuteronomy and Exodus was that, well, what God said was going to come true. And when Jeremiah read those words, you know what he did? He believed them. Yeah. He believed what God said in his book. And when he did believe it, it struck his heart, and he humbled himself in the sight of God. He prayed unto the God of Israel. The Bible says he rent his clothes, and he wept, and he repented. He didn't only repent of his own sins, but the sins of the nation. And then he started trying to make right by the laws what was wrong with the nation of Israel. He tried to make them all right as he was the king of that land of Israel at that time. But Josiah died, and the next three kings, they did very wicked in the sight of God, and so therefore God brought judgment of all those promises. I mean, not all of the promises of God are true. I mean, are good, but they're all true. Right. And so God brought Nebuchadnezzar down into the land of Israel and carried them all away and carried them into the land of, of, of uh, Babylon all because of Israel's sin. And those, even though Jeremiah was preaching, even though Josiah had a, um, um, he believed the word of God and he tried to make everything right, Sin had gotten so far ingrained in the fabric of their society that even after Josiah was gone, they said, we ain't going to listen. Yeah, yeah. We still ain't going to hearken. We're still not going to listen to God's word. One reason why I believe this Bible is true, if you read this, old, especially the Old Testament, if you read it as a history book, you would see how God deals with the nation. Yeah, yeah. You could see how the promises that God promised to the nation of Israel and how they come true yeah. on all levels yeah. that they would come true. The promises that God gave to Israel in, in Exodus and Deuteronomy, they all came true. And those prophecies came true 800 years later. Yeah. They came true. The Koran can't do that. But this Bible that we have in our hands, written down in black and white, it ain't changed not one word. Amen. In this King James Bible, you have prophecy that comes true, and it's written down. So Jeremiah began to preach during this time of Josiah, and on the surface it looks like the um, king was listening to the word of God, and he was listening um, to um, Jeremiah um, preach, and Jeremiah was back. Um, by the word of God and by the people, but the people just would not listen. They would not change their ways. Yeah. Jeremiah told Israel, if you would repent, I would um, turn away this captivity from you. Yeah. I mean, when you read the book of Jeremiah, it, it seems like Nebuchadnezzar is right up to the door of the walls of Jerusalem. And Jeremiah says, if you just repent yeah. and yeah. do right, Amen. I would turn him back. They would not hearken oh, yeah. to the old past. Amen. They would not go back. So Israel went into captivity. People were killed. Their houses was burned. Yeah. I mean, how would you like to be 
forced out of your house never to return again. And if you did return, you would only find it burnt down. That's what happened because of the judgment of God yeah, on the right. nation of Israel. Yeah. I want to preach a little bit about our country here. Our country was founded on Christian doctrines and principles by Christian men who wanted a Christian nation under God and under the direction and guidance of the Holy Scriptures. But oh, how times has changed since we started as a country. Yeah. We've been a slow decline, and now the, it's like the snowball rolling downhill. It's gotten up so big, so much speed, so much, much, uh, much momentum. Our world is going faster and faster. Yeah. In the worldly ways, I mean, I mean, in the Christian circles, we call it apostate and apostasy. In the worldly sessions, you can say they're on a highway to hell, going yeah. as fast as they can, like yeah. a bullet out of a gun, like a speeding train going to hell, going to hell in a handbasket, and I mean going to literally fire hell for your eternity is where people are going because yeah. they will not right. get saved Amen. because this Bible yeah. is not preached anymore. All the God-denying people, they got their dreams of this socialistic yeah. way that if we just sing Kumbaya and just all get along yeah. together that we can make world peace, you cannot do it. Amen. And it's, it's also found in the New Testament. If you wanted to read it, this Bible has everything that you need in this world right here. There's a pattern throughout the Bible here, if you'd believe it, if you'd read it. God dealt with a man, Adam. He failed. God dealt with uh, people's conscience. They failed. God dealt with the uh, human government. It failed. God dealt with the family of Abraham, failed. God dealt with the single nation, Israel, it failed. Yeah. What makes you think that America right. is going to be any different That's right. than what the nation of Israel right. has done? Started out good and right, but we've come a long way, baby, yeah, than amen. from the, what amen. our founding fathers has tried That's to right. be. I'm going to turn into a prophet right now. Okay. <laughs> this ain't by no um, um, jumbleized evil spirits, but I'm going to prophesy from the Word of God Amen. about the future of America. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Our country is going to get worse, and it's going to get worse and worse. It's going to get worse socially. Our country is going to get worse morally. Our country is going to get worse spiritually. Our country is going to get worse economically. Yeah. And all of those things are found in the New Testament yeah. of this Bible right here. All nations of this world, whether they know it or whether they don't know it, they're under the guidance of Satan, yeah, who is may. the God of this world. Yeah. And it's evident. Yeah. It's evident by the laws that they pass in our yeah. country. Yeah. You know, not one law of America country that we're in right now has been passed to protect or to stand with Bible believing Christians. Right. Not Amen. one of them. Yeah. All the laws and the court cases, they've been brought up by the ACLU. They've been against Bible standards and Christianity. Amen. They've gotten the Bible out of the schools. They've gotten Christmas, the, the Christian Christmas songs out of the schools. You can't even hang the single um, um, Ten Commandments on the wall of the school anymore. Yeah. You, they, um, um, they can um, allow abortions to take place to cover up people's sins. Yeah. They allow homosexual as normal living yeah, and I forcing think. people yeah. to conform to the world's standards by taking away people's rights to refuse to do business with um, perverts, and they do it Amen. only based right. on a yeah. biblical Christianity doctrine based on this Bible, and the world has shut them up saying you cannot use that Bible yeah. as Amen. a standard. Yeah. 
somewhere in the near future, there's going to be a worldwide tax on everybody that has any money left. Yeah. I mean, there is going to be a worldwide tax on people. They may not call it a tax. They may call it a fee or something. But there's going to be a tax. And that all that money is going to go to a centralized government. And it's yeah. not going to be America government. Amen. That's also found in the New Testament, in yeah. case you want to find yeah. it. And then there's going to be real global warming and more terrible acts as described in Revelation. And then here's the kicker. I'm talking as the prophet, but only backed by, by, by this Bible. Jesus Christ is literally going to come back amen. to this amen. earth and he's going to rule and reign yeah, on amen. this earth yeah. with the rod of iron and he's going to rule in righteousness and peace and he's going to rule for a thousand years. Amen. But before all of that, Jesus Christ, before Jesus Christ comes back to the earth in person, he's going to come back in the air. Yeah. And he's going to take all the saved, all the born again people, all the people who has trusted Christ, who we've had to lay in the grave. They're also going to come up. And we're going to be with the Lord forever. We're going to be taken up in the air. And we're going to be with the Lord forever and ever in heaven. Yeah. And then after that, that's when the tribulation, all those things are going to take place. But in the meantime, while, we're still, while we are still here in this world, things are going to get worse for the Christian. I don't know about this administration that we... We have, it might help, it may not help. But one thing I do know, that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to work things out to where it will, everything will be ready. Right. God raised up Joseph to protect his family, yeah. to protect the nation right. of Israel. God raised up Pharaoh to show that God has more power than all the gods of Egypt. Yeah, right. God raised up Moses to deliver Israel out of Egypt. God raised up um, judges there in the book of Judges to help and to, to deliver Israel. And God raised up Nebuchadnezzar to punish his own people. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying here, the hand, the, 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 the king's um, heart is in the, the king's hand is in the heart of the Lord. I mean, everything's going right on time. Yeah, yeah. No matter which way we have, everything's going to work out. But in the meantime, what you are not supposed to do is lean back and just wait. Yeah. You are not to quit and say whatever will be, will be. That is Amen. not what you do. Yeah. You are told to be a representative. Amen. God wants um, someone to stand up for him. God wants someone to speak for him, to stand up for the Lord, and to say, thus saith the Lord, this is what the God says in his word. Jeremiah knew this. Jeremiah preached. He knew the judgment of God was coming, but he preached. He said, repent and do right. Repent and do right. Amen. But they would not listen. Jeremiah said, I'll just quit. But Jeremiah said it was like a fire shut up in his bones and that he was weary with forbearing and he could not stay. There's something, but when you know to do right, when you know what is right, you cannot be quiet. You need to say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And Jeremiah said, ask for the old path and to walk therein. I would like for one politician to stand up and to say, I believe this because the Bible says so. Amen. But Jeremiah asked for the old paths and to walk therein. You say, what are the old paths? Well, I'm going to give you two of them to keep it short. The first thing is you need to remember God is the creator of this earth. I know this may sound redundant, but God created the heavens Amen. and the earth. Yeah. It did not evolve. Yeah. There was not a big explosion yeah. that created life. 
Let me make it clear. God created this world. And the God that created this world, he is the God of Israel. He is the God of Jesus Christ that sent his son to die on Calvary. That is the God that created this world. It was not Allah. It was not Mother Earth. It was not no generic God that just anybody can worship. It is a holy and a righteous God that made heaven and earth and sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. We need to teach our kids that. We need to teach them that early because they're being indoctrinated in our public schools from that, that we um, evolved and stuff like that. And like I said, it's a, evolution is a very damnable heresy that the, because it, it removes God out of the equation and it makes man his own God. And if man and you're just responsible for your own actions according to society's laws. Yeah. And those things change as Amen. we've known. Man is not just an animal. Yeah. God has a soul. Yeah. And if you believe in evolution, then you're just an animal with no God to give credit yeah. to. Yeah. And if you think you're just an animal, then you just have a very materialistic life. Yeah. If you think this, if you're here just for a um, while you're living, get all you can, covet all you want, yeah. do whatever you want to do because this life is all that you get. And then if, if, you, if life passes you by, then you're just done. Yeah. And then when you're just done, you just go into the grave and turn into dust and worm meat. Yeah. That's what evolution teaches. Yeah. Yeah. Evolution, if, if you believe in evolution, all, all, you're just like an animal. Self-preservation, self-gratification, and self-propagation. That is all that an animal is concerned yeah, with. Yeah. But amen. we need to teach that there is a God, That's there is a the creator, yeah. and who that creator is. It's the, like a, it's a God of Israel and of Jesus Christ. The other thing we need to get back to is we need to get back to reading our Bibles and believing our Bibles, Amen. and we need to teach our Amen. Bibles. Amen. Our founding fathers believed in the Bible, and they based the concept of this country that we live in and, and to govern this country by the, um, by the Bible itself. But since then, our government has outlawed the Bible from being taught or even read. This Bible is a forgotten book in our government. Yeah, amen. It's really not forgotten. It's just tucked away and hid. Yeah. It's hid away because people and government does not want to be held accountable to yeah, the God of right. this Bible. It is hidden away in hopes that the conviction from the Holy Spirit will go away and they don't have to deal with it. This Bible is hidden away from our leaders so that they won't be reminded what needs to be done and how they should um, act. This Bible is hidden away so people's sins will not be revealed and it will not be revealed to God. That's why our government has outlawed this Bible. They don't want nothing to do with this Bible right here. Amen. They don't want this Bible to be the final authority on all matters of conduct and decisions. Yeah. And since if they don't believe that this Bible is the final authority, then who becomes the authority? Man. Yeah. And if you have enough power, you can be the final authority. Yeah, amen, you amen. can pass the laws. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I want one politician to stand up and say, I'm going to vote this way. Because I believe the Bible says so. Amen. Not because the will of the people or I just believe or, or my conscience lets me this way. No, I want them to stand up and say, I believe the Bible. Now, our government has passed many laws on equal rights, silver rights. But the only one who does not have a right is a person right. that believes this old book right, right here. Yeah. People will yeah. laugh at it. They'll ridicule it. 
they'll tell lies about our Bibles. But like I said, this is the only book that's outlawed by our government. And if I had to guess, and I'm not far off, the reason why it's outlawed is because our government and people are afraid of this Bible. Amen. They're, they're literally afraid of a book. Yeah. But it ain't just a book. Yeah. It's what is written on yeah. this book. Yeah. It's what's written in this book. And it is who wrote this book yeah. is what they're scared of. They talk about a war on terror is radical Islam. No. Our government, the war on terror is they're afraid of this Bible right here. Amen. They're afraid to hold it. They're afraid to read it. And much less, they're too afraid to believe it yeah. because of the ridicule of man. man. The Bible says the, the, the fear of man brings a snare. Yeah. They, want their pot, they, they want their votes. They want, their, um, um, they want to be um, um, popularity. Right. They want all of that in change. They'll shove this old book away. But to us who believe this book right here, this book is precious to us. This book is life-giving. This book gives us comfort. This book tells us everything that we need to know. And this book, I mean, this book, I have cried when I read scriptures. I have shaken when, when I've read scriptures. I have gotten comfort. I have gotten direction in my life when I read the words of these pages that is in this Bible. But the people will not walk. They will not read this yeah, book amen. and believe this book right here. And the reason why our government will not read this book and believe this book is because they won't obey the very first commandment. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Yeah. Yeah. That shuts them all out right there. Amen. This Bible tells the history of Israel with prophecies that comes true. When you read this Bible, I mean, it, I can't, of all the people that wrote, this Bible is not just one book. This Bible is a collection of books written by different men at different times and is put together. And so you've got prophecy that has taken place. Some prophecy has come true in the very same day. Some prophecy has been spoken, has come true the next week. Some prophecies come to, there, um, it's recorded that men had spoke the names of kings of Israel and kings of other nations 50 to 100 years before that king was ever born. Yeah. This, prof, this book has given prophecy of what is going to happen 400 and 800 and even 4,000 years before it ever comes to pass. Yeah, and God says that I've told you the end from the beginning yeah. so that you will believe what I say in this book right yeah, here. Allah God can't do that. Yeah. He don't have no prophecy to tell. Amen. All Allah is is a false God by Amen. Satan himself. Amen. To deceive millions of people and to destroy Israel and anybody else. This Bible can be proven by mathematical statistics. And I ain't getting into it. But there's physical evidence that proves this Bible is true Amen. in what it says. But people will not accept it. They will not believe it. They will not read it. They want to hide from it. They want to banish it. And they want to outlaw it. And Jesus even spoke a, a parable about him, about a, 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 um, a man that had a vineyard and he went away and then he finally was time to gather the harvest. He sent people when they killed him. And then they finally said, I'm going to send my son and they'll reverence my son. Yeah. And they killed his own son. Yeah. And they said, now the inheritance is ours. Yeah. These people reject this Bible because they want to run this world yeah, yeah. and have what this world wants to have. But like I said, one day Jesus yeah. Christ is going to show up and yeah, he's going to show them just how to run the earth. I don't know if our government is ever going to repent or turn back to God or this Bible. 
I think sin has gotten so far ingrained in the fabric of our society with the laws that we've passed. I mean, I really don't believe that even if our government would turn back and make a few changes for, to stand up for the Bible, sin is so far ingrained in our society. Yeah. I mean, you're just on a slicky slide slope yeah. down yeah. To, to hell. But what you can do, what you, you may not can control the nation or the government, but what you can do is to repent and turn back to the God of this Bible Amen. and believe this Bible. Yeah. You need to read it and believe it. You need to teach it to your family. I mean, Dad, do you read your Bible to your family? Do you read your Bibles Amen. To your kids. Do you teach what the Bible. Amen. I mean you may not have to know everything. But I know God can speak to your heart. Out of this Bible. Amen. And just teach a few things. Then when you read it and believe it. Do you demonstrate it. By word and example. Do you prove to your family. That what God said in his Bible. Is real. Do you prove to your family. That this Bible is real. Do you prove to your family that taking heed to God's word is the right thing to do? Amen. And you know when the judgment comes, at least your kids will know what to do. Yeah. When the judgment of God fell on the nation of Israel and when Nebuchadnezzar um, came into the land and, and he took all the gold and the silver, it said they carried away 17,000 Israelites over into um, Babylon. When the nation of Israel was so bad in apostasy and sins and Nebuchadnezzar took them away. You know who some of them people were that got care as a result of the nation's disobedience. The whole nation got a lot of them got carried away by the judgment of God. But in that people that were affected, that had to leave their homes, folks like Daniel, yeah. Meshach, Bendigo, uh, Shadrach no mention of their parents you know I just wonder if they was separated from their parents and taken away but they knew how to stand up for yeah, God yeah. I mean they knew what the Bible said yeah. now I don't know if their parents taught them but I bet their parents taught them what this Bible said do your kids know what this Bible says amen do, you, yeah. do your kids know what, why you do what you do Amen. and why you do what you do because the Bible yeah. says so? Amen. The Hebrew children knew what to do. Daniel knew what to do. Yeah. You know, moral behaviors of society changes, but God never changes. Yeah. Does your kids know how to walk, talk, act like a Christian? Do they know why to walk and talk and dress like they do? Is it because of moral standards or because of society changes? Or is it because of God and what God says? You know, moral law, you know, it's wrong to, you know, kill somebody. You know the reason why I don't want to kill somebody is not because the police said or the, not because the state of West Virginia says, you know, you're going to go to jail. I don't want to kill because the Bible says not to. Yeah, amen. I don't want to lie and being held in contempt. Um, and, and go to court and be shut up in jail. But I don't want to lie because the Bible says, God says thou shalt not bear false witness. Yeah. What's your motive in doing what you're doing? I can go on and on about old past here, but I just want, you need to seek the old path. Yeah. Just believe in God, the creator, his son, Jesus Christ. Believe in this Bible right here. Believe it, read it, teach it. Do what this Bible says. Amen. This Bible's true. Yeah. Its author is yeah. still alive. Yeah. This author is still alive, and he still the same same um, um, he still says, "Come unto me." Yeah. Amen. And he's willing to save whosoever will, who who will admit they're a sinner, and say, "Lord, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you." And I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And I want to accept you as my Savior. And I'm putting all my faith and trust in you. 
And then when you get saved, that same faith and trust that you're trusting your Savior with, trust Him with your life yeah. after you get saved. Yeah. He's not going to just leave you there. Amen. Seek the old yeah. path and walk therein the way that is good. God wants to be good to his children. Yeah, yeah. Preacher, it's all I have. Amen. I am glad tonight that the old path is still there. Amen. We've got opportunity. God has saw to it that it would be there for us. Heaven and earth pass away. Yeah. The old path won't pass away. Amen. Amen. It'll still be there. And I'm glad we have the privilege of standing up yeah. for the old path. Yeah. Amen. The old time religion, if yeah. you will. It's good enough for me. Yeah. Good enough for Daniel. Good enough for the Hebrew children. Yeah. Good enough for Paul and Silas. Yeah. Good enough for Mom and Dad. Amen. Good enough for me. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, you're, you're behind time, preacher. You, you're so far out in the past, it's good enough for me. Yeah. Amen. 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 I have no intention, no intention of changing. Right. Not one, not one thought, one word of this scripture do I want to adjust yeah. to suit me. There's a whole lot of adjusting I want to do to suit what it says. Yeah. I've got adjustments in my life needs to be made. Have you got any? Amen. Here'd be a good place to Amen. make them. Just tonight, slip out of your seat and walk up here and say, Lord, I, I want to look for the old path. Amen. I want to look for the way that you want it done. Not to be popular with the people, yeah, but to be popular with God. Yeah. What's highly esteemed among men. Yeah. 